Well, I'm no navigation expert, but I'm pretty sure I'm in the right place. Let's go watch a Burton match, shall we? And I've got to say, it's quite the snazzy setup here. There's all this on-site parking, which I've had absolutely no problem getting in, five pounds. There's kids' pitchers over there. Um, I guess this is the family zone. It says this kicks off 90 minutes before every home game. It's about 85 minutes before the home game, and there's not many people here yet, but the stadium is there. There is the sign. There's Christmas songs playing over there. I guess we go and try and find the club shop, which looks like, according to this signpost, is over here. Well, I've had a wander around the front of the ground. It looks like the club shop is there, so we'll go and have a little nose in the club shop in a second. But uh, actual Santa Claus is over there. I tell you what, this place looks proper snazzy. This is a, this is a lovely little setup, lovely little ground. It looks all shiny and modern and fancy. I am impressed. I tell you what, everything about this football club seems very, very snazzy. That's one of the snazziest club shops I've ever been in. I always feel a little bit weird filming in them when I'm the only person in there. So I took a couple of covert shots on my phone that I'll show you now, but there's so much cool stuff. I almost bought a yellow and black wig, but just managed to stop myself. Did pick myself up a scarf. 13 pounds for a scarf and also match day program in the club shop as well. Very, very, it's just all so shiny. It's like they've never had a football match here before. Everything is so shiny and new looking. This ground is getting on for 20 years old, isn't it? How is it so clean and untouched by football fans? It can't be like this inside as well, surely. I'm, I'm baffled. Well, I am in. I eventually found my way up some stairs downstairs through these tunnel systems which bring me out to see the pitch from up here which is a very snazzy view we are well before kickoff so there's hardly anybody here but we do get a nice view of the pitch and of course we get to hear all of the music playing as well which is lovely that means i probably can't use this clip there aren't many football matches over the year that i've been to and felt so conscious about filming at them. There's probably, the stewards are outnumbering the, uh, the fans here at the moment, just, over, just under an hour before kickoff, and every single one of them is looking at me every time I get the camera out. I've not been told not to film, but at the same time, I don't have permission to be here filming either, so I'm fully expecting at any point to get a tap on the shoulder, which is why I've come and sat in this corner of the terrace so that no one can get behind me and tap me on the shoulder. So I'm gonna quietly read my program, try and keep myself to myself. We do have a nice little view of the, uh, of the stadium here. It's a lovely little stadium, terracing on three sides, nice little seated area over that side. Like I say, it's all so clean and polished and nice parking it's not as if it's out of town there is a main road just behind that stand at that end or that terrace at that end which i think is the away end so it's kind of central but i think it was built on land that was donated to them by the pirelli tire factory which is literally next door we're on the grounds of the factory and i think they just donated a chunk of land in exchange for naming rights i say i think i looked that up on wikipedia and uh, because of that, they've got quite a lot of space. And obviously they have the St. George's Park stuff just out of town that they train on as well. So lovely, lovely facilities, both in terms of the ground and the training setup. This could be a long-term club for us in non-league to legend. So the players have just come out for their warm-up. Looking at the programme, it does look like there are a few familiar names in this team as well. Obviously we've made the move to Burton quite early on in non-league to legend, so there's there's a good half of this squad probably who are still there at the team we're managing. So particularly keeping an eye out for Joe Powell and Cole Stockton who've been important players for me so far, but there's, there's quite a few familiar names out there. We're officially doing some scouting today. I'm monitoring the warm-up, make sure they're doing it properly. All seems to be in order so far. And meanwhile, yes, I am still very much hiding in the corner, working out at what point I can put my hat on because it is cold but once the hat goes on, it has to stay on because it will ruin my beautiful, luscious hair. I think this is the loudest PA system in the history of not just football, sports and PA systems. It is so loud. Less than half an hour until kickoff now. It's not exactly heaving in here. 
I've had a little look and I think you're looking at about an average attendance of about 3,000 people this season. So I don't know if it's going to get much fuller than this. It is cold though. The hat is on. Right, I'm going to need somebody to explain to me why the away fans have been roped off into the middle of that terrace at the end there. Don't know if the camera's picking it up, but either side of where they're all huddled together, there are ropes. They're being ushered together behind the goal. Why? I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. And I'm very intrigued. This is the Moroni Stadium, and this is Sky League One. bunch of football boys and inexplicably the PA system has got even louder I didn't know that was possible so it has now filled up a little bit here's your uh, team news on here just so you can see who's playing like I say quite a few uh, players on both teams who I recognize both from playing for and against Posh and from being a non-league legend this year On the topic of playing against Posh, to give you some context on these two teams, both of them have played my team, Peter, recently. Burton lost 4-0. Stevenage nearly beat us. We were 2-0 down against them, but did manage to put it back to a 2-2 draw. Stevenage very much up there, pushing for the playoffs, pushing for promotion, but do play horrible Steve Evans football. And if I wasn't making this video, I would just boo him for the entire match because I don't like that man. Burton trying not to get involved in a relegation battle. So this might be another cursed Kev does match day vlog performance, but fingers crossed we can see a Burton win. One other thing worth mentioning, of course, now we are in the Football League, really can't be filming the pitch. So uh, don't expect there to be any uh, pitch footage other than there you go, we're underway. Hopefully the EFL don't sue me for that bit. Well, we are only six minutes in. Burton have got a penalty. So we could be about to celebrate a goal, boys and girls. It's Powell to step up to take it as well, one of my boys from non to Legend. In front of the Stevenage fans as well. Go on. The penalty was saved. The rebound is converted. We got the big yeah from the Stevenage fans and then a bigger yeah from in here. 1-0 Burton, it's a terrible penalty. He did the little jump up, skip thing that nobody should be doing that. Did they not learn from Bruno Fernandes the other day? You don't take a penalty like that anymore. He did, it was saved, but it is now 1-0 to Burton and they're making a lot of noise behind that goal now. Steve Evans just got booked. That was better than the goal. <laughs> oh, what a time to be alive. If I get to see that man get sent off today, I will be over the... He's still arguing over there. Get him gone. Goodness me. <laughs> so we're about halfway through the first half. Stevenage just doing what Stevenage do, basically lumping it forward, trying to get it out to their two quick wingers or their big lumps in the middle and then lump the ball into the area and it's pretty much constant bombardment. Feels like there's probably going to be a breakthrough coming from them soon. Burton haven't really offered anything going forward other than winning the penalty, but they are still winning. But it does feel like there's a Stevenage goal on the way. I'm not particularly enjoying the way Stevenage play because I don't really rate this way of playing football, but it does seem to be very effective and they're on the attack again now. Ball comes across the penalty area. Keeper pushed it into the path of one of the Stevenage strikers and he's just skied it over the crossbar, but it does feel like there's an equaliser coming. We're about five minutes before half-time, there's just been an absolute goal mouth scramble off the back of a corner. I'm like 70% sure the ball just crossed the line for a Stevenage goal, but it wasn't given and no one else seemed to appeal for it, so clearly my eyes don't work properly. I'll be interested in seeing a replay of that one though. Remains 1-0 to Burton. Really, really feels like there's a goal coming there, especially from these set pieces. They are just causing chaos. And there is the equaliser right on the stroke of half time. It felt offside to me. 
Um, again, would be interesting seeing the replay. To be fair, I think it probably evened things out for the goal they should have had five minutes ago. But you can't say it's not been coming. They have been doing all of the attacking for most of that first half. The Stevenage defensive line has been five yards into this half. And uh, Burton just haven't really offered anything at all going forward. They very much scored that early goal and then sat back and tried to see it out for 85 minutes. And that's never going to work. It's 1-1. It's very nearly half time. But they're going to have to do something different in the second half. And that is half time. And obviously those Stevenage fans at that end of the pitch are pretty happy to have grabbed that equaliser just before the break. Now we need to go and play the game of I wonder if they accept card at the, uh, at the coffee and pie place. Well, despite only being a little bit down the road from Tamworth, where they failed the coffee and a Twix test and gave me accidental chips, here we have coffee and a Twix. Only £3.80. Weirdly, there was two refreshment stands down there, one with a massive queue and one with nobody at all. I went down to the one with nobody and asked me if it was open. It was like, yeah, no idea. Go a bit further along. That's my top tip as officially a local now because they can understand me. But it's, uh, it's fancy coffee as well. Dewey Egberts. And that's scalding hot, which is quite welcome because it's freezing cold here. I'm not 100% sure what the mascot is supposed to be, but he's definitely a, a mascot called Billy, apparently. Well, here we go then, boys and girls. Second half, about to begin. Come on, that guy's really looking forward to it. It's actually not a terrible turnout in the end. I don't know what the attendance is. I guess we'll find out later in the game. But it has filled up quite nicely. That end still absolutely baffles me the way they're all roped off into the middle like that. I'm sure there is a good reason that someone's explained to me by now in the comments. And there we have second half underway. Well, five minutes into the second half, just been an absolute goal mouth scramble. Stevenage on the attack at that far end. It's, uh, it's scrambled off the line, but has then resulted in a penalty. Clear foul as it was uh, trying to be scrambled back in again. And almost to the minute, compared to how it was in the first half, five or six minutes in at the start of this second half we've got another penalty at the same end in front of the Stevenage fans I mean nobody can say it hasn't been coming but I don't want to I mean both in terms of I'm here supporting Burton and also as a Peterborough fan who were in a promotion race with Stevenage on both counts I want them to miss this penalty which is about to be taken and I'll let you guess the outcome based on the noise. That cheer was from far away. It's 2-1 Stevenage. I don't see a way back into this game for Burton unless they do something very, very different. So about, just about hitting the hour mark, a couple of substitutions for Burton, most notable Cole Stockton is on, who we know all about from non-league to legend. Um, I'm also particularly enjoying the fact that the substitutions are sponsored by Doggy Daycare Burton and the goals are sponsored by the chip shop round the corner. That kind of thing tickles me. Best Burton attack of the game then. We are 72 minutes in. It all led from a corner. They were a little bit reluctant to get it into the box, as you can imagine, with the, all the big lumps in the Stevenage team, but it did eventually get floated across. The Burton player is there to make contact. It's a really good save from the keeper and just manages to claw it back off the goal line. But there was a, a period of two or three minutes of Burton pressure there, which is the first time all afternoon that's been the case. Still 2-1 with like 20 minutes to go. Maybe they've got a chance. Or into the 80th minute, there's lots of very frustrated Burton fans all around me. They are on the attack now. They've probably looked the most likely the last 10 minutes or so to grab another goal. It's still only 2-1. They've made a lot of changes, lots of boos for the manager every time he's done it. I still don't think the, uh, the home fans are very much in agreement with what the manager's doing. But they are giving it a decent effort. The changes have definitely made a difference. And they're on the attack again here. And maybe a cross is about to come over. No. Stevenage are very solid defensively. Right, we are 
the 82nd minute. There was a corner. They've been really reluctant to just get the ball in the penalty area because they're dominated in the air by the Stevenage defenders every time they do. But this one might actually be it and delivered into the middle. It is. The keeper's dropped it as well. It might be coming. Well, we're now two minutes into six minutes of time added on. It doesn't look like it is coming. Still 2-1, it's a Stevenage free kick at the moment at the other end. They're not even sending them all of the big men forward anymore. This uh, Carl Piergiani still goes forward because he goes forward for their goal kicks. That's the kind of football they've been playing today. But um, yeah, I think it's probably ending 2-1 at this point, unless there's some kind of flash of inspiration from somebody and it's not looking likely based on what I've witnessed over the last hour and a half. Maybe not a flash of inspiration, maybe a moment of thuggishness. Free kick given away on the edge of the area here. I don't know if they've got anyone who can hit one, um, but it was like a kick to the chest from the Stevenage player. And this is a dangerous position to have a 94th minute free kick in. Looks like it's gonna be Powell to take it, who of course missed the penalty earlier in the match. Just hit it. If he sticks this top corner, we're going to go giddy in here. Positively giddy. Oh, I think that's probably... OK, maybe not last chance of the game, because there is a corner here. They've taken it short again, which seems insane. And, yeah, as you would expect, nothing really comes of it. I get they've been dominating in the air all afternoon, but when it's 95 minutes on the clock and you need a goal, get the ball in the area, everyone's forward, and they're still knocking it around, passing it back to their own goalkeeper. One has to question things sometimes, but I think we are moments away from a final whistle. The Stevenage fans down that end know it as well. They're in... Uh, full song and I think from this goal kick we are probably going to hear a final whistle lumped forward again and there is your final whistle and as you can hear the, uh, the Burton fans not very amused with what they've just seen well the curse of Kev continues one of these days, I will come and do a match day vlog and witness a victory. I don't remember the last time it happened though, but I think that is my final match day vlog of the year, unless something really crazy happens in non-league to legend now. What a year it's been. We've done Barcelona, we've done Juventus. We even went to Wales, although that might have been back in 2022. Thank you very much for the support on the match day vlogs as well as the non-league non to legend, all the football manager stuff as well. Um, non-league to legend will be back tomorrow. If you've enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up on it for me. Subscribe to the channel to see where I end up next on this match day vlogging journey. And thank you very much for watching.